The Bolton Paul Defiant aircraft was designed and built as a turret fighter, but since it didn't have any forward-firing guns, it required immense concentration and precise communication skills between the pilot and the gunner. Because of its limiting nature, the Defiant had trouble excelling during day operations in the vicious air battles over the UK early in World War II, and its true potential was only realized when converted to a night fighter. This obstacle did not stop the so-called Daffy from making history during a routinary afternoon in 1940, when it destroyed 37 German aircraft in two sorties, the highest score of any Royal Air Force squadron at the time. But despite its unusual gun arrangement, the Defiant mostly benefited from its similarity with another British fighter, giving it a significant advantage during relentless dogfights with the enemy. Still, the ruse wouldn't last long, and the Defiants would soon need to step up their game. The Threat of the Axis Bombers After almost two decades of significant technological advances in military aviation, the Royal Air Force's anti-aircraft defenses were presented with a particular challenge in the 1930s. Most Axis bombers were substantially faster than the English single-engine biplane fighters. However, the Royal Air Force anticipated that they'd have to defend Great Britain against massed formations of unescorted enemy bombers soon, and concluded that a new generation of turret-armed bombers would be the answer to their questions. On June 26, 1935, the Air Ministry issued specifications for a two-seat fighter with a current concentrated armament and similar performance qualities to the single-seat monoplane fighters being developed at the time. The idea was for the new fighter to be deployed as a destroyer of unescorted Axis bomber formations. Protected from the airstream flowing backward by an aircraft propeller, the turret gunner would deliver tremendous firepower on rapidly moving targets, accurately bringing down more enemy aircraft than was previously possible. Bolton Paul aircraft eventually emerged as the winner, with a design featuring four gun turrets and was awarded a two prototype order. The company had recently pioneered the use of a pneumatic powered enclosed nose turret in the Bolton Paul P 75 Overstrand biplane bomber, and also bought the rights to a French designed electro hydraulic powered turret, becoming the nation's leader in turret design. The Defiant The chosen prototype later renamed the Bolton Paul Defiant, was explicitly designed to intercept heavy German bombers. It was planned that during daytime and nighttime missions, a group of Defiants would fly underneath or to the sides of the Luftwaffe bomber groups, bringing the enemy down by concentrating their fire. Bolton Paul created a clean and simple design to meet the Royal Air Force's specifications. The aircraft's pièce de résistance, designed to catch the ever faster enemy fighters and ease pilot responsibility, was a two-man pilot gunner design with a turret behind the cockpit from which the gunner would fire four .303 Browning machine guns. The turret ring was blocked at the rear to prevent the guns from firing into the tail assembly and the propeller blades. In case of an attack, the gunner would turn the turret forward, pointing at a 19-degree upward angle and giving fire control to the pilot. On April 28, 1937, even before the prototype's maiden flight, the Royal Air Force placed an order for 87 defiant aircraft. Months later, on August 11th, the first prototype performed its first flight without the turrets, as they were not ready yet. Without the drag of the heavy turret, the Defiant showed promising results, and the contract was furthered the following year. However, when the turrets were finally installed in 1938, after several flights without them, the prototype showed a disappointing performance. In addition, coordination and flawless communication were essential to fly the aircraft. As the pilot concentrated on steadily flying the aircraft beneath the undefended belly of the bombers, the gunner would focus his attention on using his turrets to destroy them. Its slow development and lacking results eventually delayed the first delivery until December of 1939, when the Royal Air Force's 264th Squadron received the first Defiant. Daytime Operations The Defiant's design was relatively straightforward to build, and thus its production rates escalated rapidly. The 141st Squadron was the second day fighter unit to convert to Defiance and received their first aircraft in April of 1940. During the model's first operational sortie on May 12, 1940, the squadron claimed to have downed a Junker Ju-88. However, the following day, the unit suffered its first loss when five out of six aircraft were shot down by Messerschmitt Bf-109s in a savage dogfight. Days later, the Defiant made history when two afternoon patrols over Dunkirk from the 264th Squadron destroyed 37 German aircraft, 
the best score from any Royal Air Force squadron to that day. When interviewed by reporters, crew member Nicholas Cook told the press that the feat felt as simple as knocking apples off a tree. However, since the Defiant was not designed to withstand dogfighting, the losses soon mounted, and it became clear that the aircraft was no match for the BF-109. Subsequently, the two squadrons were moved to less endangered zones. When the Royal Air Force asked for more solid performance statistics, Bolton Paul introduced the Defiant Mark II. Featuring a pressurized fuel system, additional fuel space, and powered by the 1260 horsepower Merlin XX engine, the first production model of this variant performed its initial flight on July 20th, 1940. Once enough engines were available, production of the improved variant began in August of 1941, with deliveries to the Royal Air Force coming soon after. A helpful mistake. Initially, the Bolton Paul Defiant proved to be quite successful against the Luftwaffe, earning the endearing nickname of Daffy. It was also commonly mistaken for the Hawker Hurricane fighter, so German pilots would attempt to bring it down from the rear, as the Hurricane had no rear-facing guns. This confusion led to several early victories against the Luftwaffe. However, this success was short-lived. Once the German pilots recognized the error, the Luftwaffe changed tactics and began to attack from the front or below. While the Defiant's gunners could fire at targets from above and behind, the aircraft was completely defenseless against this new maneuver, resulting in several losses. Although initial estimates indicated that the aircraft would be a great adversary to the fast German bombers, the addition of a turret and the extra crewman made the Defiant nearly 100 miles per hour slower than the Luftwaffe ME-109 fighter. And while more experienced crews would use the Luftbury technique to repel German fighters, forming a circle and descending so that the enemy pilots could not fly in front or underneath them, younger squadrons without required coordination and communication did not fare well when encountering German aircraft. In late August of 1941, the 264th Squadron lost eight aircraft during an encounter with the Luftwaffe. And although the squadron inflicted similar casualties on the enemy, over half the delivered defiance had been shot down by then. Originally intended as a day and night fighter, the aircraft was subsequently assigned to night operations only. Nighttime Operations The initial Defiant night fighters lacked airborne interception radar systems, and enemy aircraft were spotted and attacked merely by eye sighting, assisted only by ground-based searchlights that helped illuminate attacking bombers. In early 1941, as the Blitz German nighttime bombing campaign reached its peak while continually terrorizing UK citizens, Defiant-equipped squadrons commenced their patrols. According to aviation author John Taylor, the four Defiant-equipped squadrons within the Royal Air Force were responsible for shooting down more German aircraft than any other type during the Blitz. Defiants equipped with radars eventually entered service later in the year. Fitted with AI Mark IV airborne interception radar, these aircraft were now able to attack unescorted German bombers without heavy interference. By then, the Luftwaffe's bombing campaign on the United Kingdom was slowing down, as the German forces became heavily engaged on the Eastern Front, including the invasion of the Soviet Union. By 1942, the Defiant's limited flying time of a mere two hours, and the need to redirect efforts elsewhere, led to the replacement of the aircraft by the Bristol Bowfighter and the de Havilland Mosquito, both faster and with a much longer range. A Useful Model The Defiant would continue to be used in a wide variety of roles, including gunnery training and special operations. Also, between 1942 and 43, a Royal Air Force squadron operated nine Defiants fitted with moonshine radar jamming equipment as part of a joint operation with the U.S. Armed Air Forces during daylight bombing raids against the common enemy. One Defiant even became the testing aircraft for the first ever Martin Baker ejection seat, starting dummy ejection trials in May of 1945. And in its shallow air-sea rescue role, the Defiant was chosen as the intended replacement for the Westland Lysander. To perform rescue operations, the aircraft was equipped with a pair of underwing pods, each containing two M-type dinghies. But although several squadrons flew Defiance, the aging model quickly proved underwhelming due to its failing flight statistics. Despite producing several aces in the European theater, the model's last operational use was as a target tug, pulling target gliders for RAF pilot target practice in India. According to Air Chief Marshal Hugh Dowding, then head of Fighter Command, the fighter struggled to defend itself against the faster German aircraft, and it became too expensive. Ultimately, while the Defiant's rotating turret design was successfully used by other bombers throughout World War II, its peculiar gun arrangement 
benefited more from enemy misidentification than because of its own abilities. Thank you for watching our Dark Skies video. Before you go, don't forget to leave us a comment and subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting historical content. Stay tuned.